Profile listeners, it's Joey here. Uh, we have the honor to talk to Max Cavalera today about Soulfly's newest album, Totem, which was released last summer, and now the band's epic 57-date tour uh, circling the entire country. It's in incredible. So, Max, thank you so much for taking time for us today. I'm excited to chat with you. Thank you. It's good to be here talking to you. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is a crazy tour. You know, we haven't done one of those in a long time. And uh, when I saw the schedule, I was like, holy shit, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, it's it's, it's crazy, crazy awesome. Well, I, I wanted to start out telling you a story of the first time that I went to a Soulfly show. Um, it was many years ago. My wife and I were only married for a couple of years. And uh, have you ever heard of the game Cribbage? Which one? Cribbage. It's no. like a, a card game with, with a little board to keep track and stuff. Well, my wife and I, we, we love playing Cribbage. And, uh, you know, we didn't have much money at the time. So we made a bet with each other, best out of 100 games of cribbage, and we were keeping track. And if she won, uh, I had to take her out for a fancy dinner. And if I won, I got to take her to a metal show. So it came down to one game and one point, and I beat her. And uh, I chose to go to Soulfly. So my wife, who doesn't even like metal, went and saw you guys once. And it was, uh, it was pretty fun. That was at the uh, Rave in Milwaukee. All right. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a fun venue. And we had such a blast. And, uh, you know, the show went late. We got home late and I had to work at five the next morning. I didn't even sleep that night. So I have oh. I have crazy memories of the first time I saw Soulfly. It was, it was really fun. That's cool. I should I, I, I think I should do gonna do that with my wife. I'm going to I'm going to think of a game and and then. If I win, she get she has to go with me wherever I want to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so she has she's gonna have to go with me watch some brutal underground death metal. Yeah, yeah. Um, you gotta and, win, though, Max. What's that? You gotta win. I have to win, right? Yeah. And if I lose, um, I get to stay home and wash wash the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That sounds fair, right? Yeah, that sounds fun. Um, well, anyways, totem twelve albums, man. That's that's a lot. That's something to be proud of. How's that feel? Feels good, man. You know, it's it's like, I mean, I I don't really look back at the stuff too much. I don't listen to my own stuff that much, honestly. I listen to other people's music okay. most of the time. Uh, I'm a huge metal fan, aficionado, nerd. Um, spend hours listening to albums and. I make compilations for myself, for friends. Um, I always telling people about bands. I, you know, I'm still a teenage inside, even though I'm 53. The brain is still 17. Yeah. Um, and I, I like to think of it as there. Uh, it's it's just a huge encyclopedia of albums. You know, all of them. Mm -hmm. The Sepultura stuff, Nail Bomb, Soulfly, Cavalera Conspiracy, Killer BQ, Go Ahead and Die. It's a lot of fucking music. Yeah. Um, but it's I like to think of it uh, as a huge, you know, encyclopedia. And when I'm done, when I'm not here, no longer here, that I can't write no more. So while I'm here, I want to create as much as I can. I I'm still very much inspired. I still very much uh, excited to make records and tour for those records that part of me is still the same so um yeah Toto was a unique record honestly it was created in a very unorthodox way the whole process was different from any other record I ever done um and that I think it it kind of you, you kind of can hear that on this album that mm -hmm. it was made different and uh, I mean, for the for the first six months, it was just me and Zion, my son, and we became almost like, you know, uh, Dark Throne or like a two two piece band, just the two of us. You know, it was all the mu all the music was done between drums and guitar. You know, we yeah. wrote all the skeleton of the record together, and after that, we got Mike to play bass on it, and we got Arthur involved, and Arthur was a huge 
piece of this album because he was a producer, but he also sat down with me and played guitar mm -hmm. and we ended up jamming a lot. And, and Arthur to me is the furthest thing from a serious professional studio guy. He's like my old buddy from high school mm -hmm. that we, we listened to metal together back in the day, yeah. you know? Um, I never went to high school in Brazil, so but if I did, he was he would be my high school buddy. Sure. That that I'll be talking metal. We like the same bands. We like the same shit. I love all the underground stuff that he touches. Man, he he, his hands, he, his fingerprints are all over so many great underground albums, and it was just a joy to work with him on Totem, and create this the album from the ground up, you know, like, like building a pyramid, you know? Yeah. Uh, and then we weren't afraid of experimenting either. I think we have a song called spirit animal. That's like 10 minutes long. And I never done anything well, like that's that. The, that's the one song I was going to ask you about too. Cause I, I, I really like that song. It's almost like three songs in one. Yeah. And I was yeah. wondering like, what inspired you? Like, what's the story behind that one? So yeah, that's, that started as a, as a, I wrote a big intro for it. I have a demo for the The demo was like seven minutes, six minutes. Um, but I was watching this documentary of this music producer uh, talking about music that puts you in a trance, a lot of tribal music like that. Mm. A lot of ritualistic music puts you in a trance. It has to be more than seven minutes um so with that kind of idea in mind i proposed to arthur um let's make this real long song in the end of the record oh, wow. i have okay. i have all the riffs you know i have like a lot of the riffs and we start building building and building and uh you know we we made that crazy ending and yeah, yeah it's, it's it's really cool it's completely out of my comfort zone i i you know my 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 main you know Thing is short songs, three minute songs with hopefully a catchy, nice, nice chorus to sing yeah. along, um, something like that. But you know, sometimes I love to put myself out of my comfort zone and and just really be uncomfortable with the situation and see what happens with it. And a lot of good stuff sometimes comes out of that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and that's like you don't play too safe either. You know, could have been a huge disaster. You don't know until you try, you know. So, and I'm not afraid of trying. I love trying new things. Yeah. Um. That's like so. That was like part of the excitement to to make a song like Spirit Animal. Um. And I I knew I already had a lot of killer songs in the beginning of the record. Yeah, like you know, Superstition and Scouring the Vile and Field Upon Field and those are all going to be great live. They're short, mm -hmm. powerful songs. So I want to do something else for the end of the record. So I thought this is a opportunity to make a 10 minute song. And it was, was really fun. It was yeah, really, cool. really cool. Um, do you have a spirit animal? Is that something you're into or did have you ever joked around even on the lighthearted side of things? Do you, what animal, what does Max Cavalera most associate with? <laughs> Well, I'm a Leo, and, and as far as uh, a, a sign, um, and that's why I like the Detroit Lions is because mm. of because I'm a Leo and Lions. And, well, they just beat my Packers, so I'm a little sore about that. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that was bad. That, that was a that was a that was a mean thing of the the Lions to do. Yeah, was. They, they weren't even in they, the playoffs. They anymore. didn't even they didn't even need it to win that. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean. I don't know my my spirit animal, but I love I love the idea, especially like the Native Native American uh, connection with a lot of the the animals and even you know South American uh, tribes really are connected with like jaguar, you yeah. know they connect with with jaguar gods and serpents and uh, and uh, you know here is really connected to wolf and. Uh, owls and yeah I, I just 
I, I think the, the the actual name, the actual name, the spirit animal is actually uh, the first time I saw it was actually listening to Liquid Metal, uh, Series XM Liquid Metal in the car, and and uh, the DJ Jose Mangan, he was doing something, playing something, and under his name said Spirit Animal. Uh. And that's where I got it. That's when I first got out. I got out of the car. I have a book where I write all my ideas. So I got out of the car and write, wrote down that idea immediately. Like, spirit animal. That sounds like a cool idea. Um, same with, with many of other songs I've done through my life. I remember Refuse and Resist was actually, I was riding a subway in New York. And there was this Black Panther guy in the subway with a black, leather ja jacket and he had a, a bunch of shit written in his jacket a bunch of like black power shit and the very end said refuse and resist oh wow. in, in his jacket you know and i was like yeah i'm using that that's a, that's a badass that's cool. it's cool that you just get inspired by like everyday stuff right yeah it's like right riding a subway gave me one of the, my most popular songs of all time yeah. came from came from that subway ride, you know, in New York. Awesome. Um, yeah, so it's always, I, I think inspiration is all around you. You just got to be open to recognizing and, 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 and write it down so you don't forget. That's the right. other thing. I forgot some shit that I, you know, I can't remember because I forgot. But there was some good shit that I didn't have a pen and paper at the time. And oh, I remember later. Uh, it's the same with the riff. Do not pass a good riff, man. Yeah. If you have if you have the good riff, find a way to record it. Whatever means necessary, record that. Otherwise, you will forget. Do, do you ever just take your phone out if you don't have a guitar or something and just be like, say the riff or something in the phone? Or... Uh, oh, yeah. My iPod, I, you know, just record it because, you know, I don't have this, this set up all the time. When I'm writing, yeah, I have my little studio set up thing, you know, studio. It's not real studio. It's totally punk rock shit. Yeah. Uh, you know, I use the same shit I use when I did uh, Chaos AD Arise. You know, it's just a 12 track drum machine and a couple guitar effects. But yeah, sometimes uh, you wake up with a riff in your head and you got to go play the guitar you got to get that riff out of your head into yeah. the, the, the guitar it happens sure a couple of times like that starting that thing up right away in the morning huh <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean i love jamming man i'm a riff guy and yeah sometimes sometimes i see with the guitar and i just jam and 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 sometimes out of the jam that that one riff you know it when you hear that, that one riff comes out and it just goes yeah hi hi i'm here yeah <laughs> You better use me, you know. Uh, cool. So, so you gotta, and, and a lot of times it doesn't happen. I remember, I really struggled with the opening riff of "Jump the Fuck Up" when I was doing Primitive, and that's before we even had Corey in the song. Mm. Um, I was just wrestling with this riff, man, and it would not fucking. It was almost there, but not yet. And I kept trying. I think I tried for like four hours. And I got super mad and I broke the guitar. You know, I smashed <laughs> the guitar in the studio. The producer's like, go take a walk, man. You you hot headed right now. You nothing good's gonna come out of this. So I went for a walk, did a little hike in a mountain, came back, grabbed another guitar, and the riff came out on a first try. There you, you go. Know? So it's just one of those things sometimes it just requires that. But I, I like that I force that, you know, it's like I'm not settling for for, for the easy way out. Right. Thing. I want if I want something, I'm going to go get it. It doesn't matter what it takes. You know, I'm not going to settle for mediocrity. You know, no, it's going to yeah. be it has to be good. And now it's like the song became a killer Soulfly song with Corey on the vocals and the the. the the opening riff when you listen to the song it's what gives the, the the song is the first when you first put it on that riff comes in right away it's the first thing people hear is that riff you know so i always be intrigued by riffs man i think riffs are are, are an amazing they're magical they're 
there's something about it. Your personality comes through the riff. Your whatever is your anger, desperation, happiness, all those come through riffs, right. man. And I, I I love riffs because of that. That's why I end up even. It's not the reason why I took the two strings out. You know, that was a long time ago in Brazil. But when those strings came out of my guitar and I happened to only have four strings, it forced me to be even more creative Sure. with only only four strings. I don't have the other two to help me out. Like I got I to gotta do everything with four. I only got four, you know? Um, so I became even more of a rhythm, full rhythm riff player with four strings yeah. than before. You know, I still, to, to this day, most of my guitars have four strings on it. Well, if I was to pick one person that I would describe as a riff master, it's you. So, thank you, sir. I keep try it up, hard. man. I don't, try hard. Don't, don't get up until that riff comes out. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so, I just I got one more question for you about the album before we talk about the tour a little bit. But um, on every Soulfly album, there has been an instrumental song called Soulfly, and then the number of the album. Um, where did that idea originate? And then who writes that music? Is that you as well? Yeah, so that the idea, it started as an accident. It was kind of happened on the first album. And the actual track, I wrote it when I was in Sepultura. Um, and, and I wrote it in, in New Zealand, actually, the instrumental. And I ended up showing that to the uh, the other Sepultura guys to maybe be part of something else in the future. Uh, it turns out I left the band and I still had that piece of music. Sure. And I took that with me to the studio, and we started messing with that in 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 the, when I was making the first record and. Kind of almost by accident, that became this instrumental, and it kind of gave me idea like, okay, this is gonna be the spiritual, chill, melodic side of Soulfly that yeah. doesn't come out with like the other stuff, it's a real heavy stuff. So this is like spiritual, really like planet caravan you know mm -hmm. i i love that's why i love planet caravan i think that's like that's when you listen to that record when planet caravan comes in it's like yeah wow this is the whole vibe change you know yeah um yeah and i'm involved in a so there's two things uh, i'm responsible for finding a lot of the melodic melodies of, of those instrumentals and then also i'm responsible for finding different things to add on top of it so we already had violin saxophone keyboards we had the middle eastern instruments uh yeah so i'm kind of i try to get other unconventional instruments to become part of this so together yeah it becomes well, it's almost it's almost like soundtrack music you know i was gonna say you 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 have 12 of them now you could almost make uh another album of just that and you know classify it as world music or you know something like that it'd be it'd be yeah interesting to put that out yeah i like to think of them as, as kind of like almost like traveling highway music i think yeah. it's like if you're traveling those are real nice to listen to when you when you're driving, you know, especially if you're around mountains with ice or uh, I don't know. Well, that kind of, maybe, when I yeah. drive in the Twin Cities here, I gotta listen to regular Soulfly music. It's it's rough. It's yeah, right. Okay, there I, you go. I need my metal when I'm driving in traffic. That's cool. I mean, I like to think of those instrumental as sound track. Yeah, they're, I think they're they're soundtrack influence type songs you know and yeah. i mean the last one on on soulfly 12 um on totem is really influenced by the 80s goth music like cure and sisters of mercy 
So there's a lot of keyboards mm. and uh, it was really cool to put that into my music. I, I, I'm a huge fan of, of that stuff, but I never really tried to play that stuff. That was my first attempt to try to play that and it kind of mm -hmm. came out really cool. Um, I think Arthur really loved it. He was really the one that add the keyboards to it and made it really pure sounding 80s goth rock type shit. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so it's always, it, I gotta keep it creative. You know, I got, every record has one. So I'm all, like, I'm obligated now to find those those mel melodies and those songs and the ideas, but it's also like a challenge. And I, I think it's cool that every record has that, you know, it's like, it becomes kind of like a trademark of so of, of the yeah, soul al albums, you know. I think it's great. I, it's it's kind of fun that you never know that new Soulfly album comes out and you're like, all right, what's the instrumental going to be this time? It's it's so cool. Yeah, and I think really starts if if you if you go back in time, um, I think the first hint that we're gonna that I was gonna be doing stuff like that. It's a, a little bit on a rise with some of the intros, like altered state. But then we, we went full mode on Chaos AD with Kaiovas. Kaiovas was full instrumental. I had actually think recorded on a 12 string mm -hmm. and we recorded in a castle in Wales. And it was about a Brazilian tribe that committed suicide, um, but it was just, instrumental so it's uh, hmm. it's my it's our first instrumental experience uh and then all the soul flight ones come from that so that okay. that was the key that was like the the birth of this idea you know that's cool well we only got you for a little bit here but uh the tour 57 shows man you are absolutely crazy uh i don't know how you do it Especially, you know, I'm in my late 30s and my back is killing me when I sit too long in the car and you're in your 50s and somehow you put it off yet. But a lot of Red Bull and <laughs> uh, a lot of Red Bull and uh, just excitement from the fans. I think that's like the key. Um, you know, my whole life has been half of my life has been touring, you know, and I, I had so many great memories of touring with, with great people like Dimebag and mm. Ozzy and the Ramones, you know, um, and of course with the underground as well, you know, I'm connected with, with a lot of the underground bands. Mm. Uh, we take a lot of them on tour all the time, 200 stab wounds and, um, you know, Bewitcher, and now we're bringing Body Box and and uh, Skin Flint, which is from South Africa. Um, yeah, I like that. I don't know the the community idea of metal mm -hmm. being like everybody's part of the same fight. We're all in this together, and mm -hmm. I like that. I like that spirit. You know, is that and, why you pick? smaller venues too you guys aren't doing big shows i i noticed when you're coming to st paul right. here that's that's a small venue yeah so i love that, 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 that vibe yeah i mean it's it's like if we had a if if we had a big package tour with bigger bands we probably would have go to bigger places mm -hmm. but it's not really about that it's it's more about it's more about the relationship you're going to create with the fans you know to me that's more important you you can have you can have a, a, a you can play in front of 50,000 people and have a miserable show yeah that nobody is really connected and everybody don't give a fuck and you can have a show with 100 people but those 100 people are totally right. fucking connected to every single note you're playing yeah and that can be like the best show of your life. Um, so I'm of the belief that it's not really about the quantity, you know. Right. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how big the place. In fact, the opposite, the smaller, the cooler. We call we call those it's gonna be punk rock tonight. Yeah. Um, you know, so when, whenever I hear that during the day, the roadie normally comes to me and say, Max, 
punk rock tonight. I know exactly what to expect. Well, some it's other... going to be punk rock when you get to St. Paul. Yeah, man. Not... some motherfucker is going to fall on my pedals. Um, it's going to be some people flying everywhere. Uh, but I tell you one thing that's not going to be boring. It's yeah. not going to be going to be exciting and and i fucking love that i mean that's that's this this metal that we play is because of that you know yeah. like we write we write songs for that to see people lose their minds you know <laughs> so i i'm never too old for that shit yeah um lineup is dino joining you guys again or, or who's playing no we actually we invited mike de leon from philip anselmo Okay. He's uh he's Phil Anselmo's guitar player on in, in the illegals and amazing guitar player, shredder. Okay. Um so we already been practicing with him and uh but it's the same idea as with Dino. It's like uh we want to introduce Soulfly fans to these different guitar players that they we, we don't have like a permanent member and yeah. I, I don't I'm not I'm not looking for a permanent member yet. Yeah. Um I I kind of enjoying this phase of playing with some of my favorite guys. Yeah. So, so, so that was Dino and now Mike. Um, who knows who we're gonna play with in 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 the future? You know, yeah. could be somebody from another band that is really cool that we think might be really cool with Soulfly. Yeah. So, but right now is uh, Mike De Leon and uh, uh, yeah. So it's funny we have two Leons in the band now because the bass player. He's also named Mike Leon. Yeah. So so there's there's two Leon and two Cavaleras. It's like it, it became kind of an absurd kind of name, but thing one and uh, thing two. Yeah. <laughs> but it's cool. He's a great guitar player. I think the fans yeah. gonna love it. Well, that's cool. Um, last question for you. Uh when you guys came through Twin Cities here last year, you played Superstition and Filth Upon Filth. Is there any other songs from Totem that you're going to bring into the live set or any cover songs or something cool? Yeah, there's, um, I definitely like to do Spirit Animal. Uh, I think that would have been cool. Put that in the set somewhere. And then I like a lot of the, especially the side A of Totem, um, Rotting Pain and Scouring the Vial, um, Totem, Superstition. Field upon field, that side A is to me is very powerful. We can play the whole side A, mm. and it'd be great. Um, and then I think we mentioned the other night maybe some nail bomb even like just just bring it back a little bit of oh cool point blank find a cool point blank song that we haven't played too much cool. that can be something that the fans will really especially the old school fans will really love it yeah. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be a cool. It's gonna be a cool set list. We are we are trying to find some songs that we haven't played that people would be, would be like, oh shit, they're playing this. That's cool. That's a deep cut, you know. That, some of those. Riot some of those has always been one of my favorites. Right. Yeah. We have we have that. We have like bring it, <clears throat> uh, front lines. So <clears throat> definitely uh, some cool cool. Uh, change on a Saturday we do we will play some stuff that people are not expecting and they're gonna be surprised to hear um it's gonna be fun and it's uh like the other thing that we always do is it's get together with some of the openers and do like a cover song okay. um you know we did it with Bewitcher we did uh we did uh Overkill Motorhead um so yeah maybe we can expect maybe because we have we have Mike. We can maybe do a Pantera one. It'd be oh, kind of cool. Sweet. Like an old school Pantera track would be awesome on the list. And uh, yeah, we well, go for that. If but, you ever but, need uh, help coming up with a set list, Max, just call me up. I'll help you. All right, man. <laughs> Sounds great. But uh, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, any last comments for Brutal Planet listeners? No, I want to just thank you for the, the, the great chat. Uh, Thank for supporting Metal Brother, you know. Um, hope I'll see you in uh, in 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 uh, Minneapolis. I always love Minneapolis. I always always had a great show there, no matter what. Uh, and and now I know that's going to be punk rock 
It's going to be great. It, it's a uh, 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 350 excited. capacity place, so it'll be punk rock. The, that's the best. Those <laughs> are the best shows. I cannot wait. Um, yeah, man, thank you. Um, we are super excited for this tour. Like, I don't know, man, the older I get, um, I, I, I'm, I think I am the complete opposite of how people should be in real life. Mm. The older you should get mellow and start listening to Pink Floyd and smoking weed. And um, I don't, I, you know, I, I, I don't smoke weed and I don't really listen to Pink Floyd. Um, I like my death metal. I like my grind core. Um, and I like to get in and still got that rebel, rebel heart, man. Get out, you know, instigate some chaos in the venues <laughs> shake people up see what well, happens you're, you know? you're very metal but like you you alluded to before you're you're very much about community and connecting with people and i think that's why fans love you so much you're like you're like the johnny cash of of the metal community so oh, thank you man appreciate that i i do and i try and i think i think we need more than metal man i think like a, a lot of times it, it became a little bit territorial or mm. you know political and let's not let's leave that to yeah. other styles of music they can be let's let's leave let's keep metal amazing and open-minded and yeah. cool for people to, to enjoy you know i love that man i think that's like that's the key um and that's why we 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 rather do our own tours like this um uh, than some big corporate tour you know yeah. i i think i think there's there's something there's something more um authentic and pure and with more integrity when we do tours like this yep. you know we, well it we, brings we, people together from different backgrounds and different likes and yeah, and like check out music. Check out the opening bands, and, yeah. and uh, I, I've been I've been jamming Body Box a lot lately. Actually, I think that's that's gonna be awesome. You know, like it was the same as when we took when we took two hundred stab ones out. It was before you know they they a lot of people talk about them now, mm -hmm. but at that time when we took them, nobody knew who they were, and I remember look watching them going, "Holy shit, these guys are this is cool. This is a this is some." Uh, down to earth grindy death metal done right you know yeah um and i love that man i love to to support the underground as much as i can yeah um you know and and i having fun too i just i love to get out of there and have fun because if you're if you're not having fun and don't do it you know you gotta you gotta enjoy it you know and and it doesn't matter if the songs are real aggressive and angry but you can you can have fun with it. That's, yeah. Cause that's that's the that's the spirit where that the songs were created. You know, they were created to. They're angry songs, but they bring people joy. You know, mm -hmm. and that's uh, mm -hmm. and especially with Soulfly, more than anything else, Soulfly has got a real, I think, positive mm -hmm. uh, thing connected to it. Um, that's I think when people come to the shows, like some of the lyrics and some of the stuff really uh it's really to, to to make you a better person in life and uh i i love that i love that positivity that so like bring to metal i think we need mm -hmm. more than that more of that in metal well i'm excited to get to the show in march um it's great to be united over music we'll plan on that um when the packers and lions are playing though sorry brother i'm gonna cheer against you um but yeah, yeah man, thanks so much for your time. It's been great. Yeah, I made a I made a bet with with my wife's brother, and uh, if the Lions lo lost, I had to paint my nails green and yellow. Okay. Um, <laughs> and if, if the Lions won, he has to paint his nails. So of course, he lost. Yeah, but but I was ready to. I, I already had like my 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 nail my nail, my green and yellow nail paints already ready because I thought, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna lose, right? There's no way. We're gonna be Rogers in 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 Lambeau Field. Yeah. Um, but what 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 
what do we know, right? Like, it's, is, is, it's, you think he's going to retire? It's crazy. I hope not, man. I I like Rogers. I think he's a badass. You yeah. know, he's a he's a cool quarterback. He's an old school. You know, he's one of those old school guys. Um, but we're just we're feeling the trauma of you know, yeah. like Brett Favre. It played out the same way. Like maybe is he retire or not maybe, retire. But, and... but maybe it won't be a bad idea for you guys to start looking. Yeah. Uh, at, at options, you know. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, he is getting up there, he's thirty nine, you know. So yeah. I don't know how, how long he has left, um, but yeah, the Lions are coming, man. We're gonna yeah. be for real this year. I know that's a, that was a real <laughs> team this year. It's uh, yeah, for the first time, I think we we feel good about about where what we have, and and uh, you know, I've been suffering for many years. I've been in, in huge amounts of pain with Lions. <laughs> So it's been season after season of just hard. You know, I used to. I remember I used to call Rogers the Lion Killer. Because <laughs> there's, oh, there's a song for you, a Soul Play song, Lion Killer. The Lion Killer. There you that's go. Awesome. That's, that's gonna be about Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> well, Max, thank you so much for your time, and uh, look forward to seeing you in a couple months. All right, my brother, you'll be good. Okay. Thank you so much.